we're going to use the four-step solving process for this. So for the state step, if the rows are truly dismissed at random, then row B should be dismissed first 25% of the days. So we wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. Our null hypothesis is that P equals 0.25, and our alternative hypothesis is that P is greater than 0.25, where P is the true proportion of days that row B is dismissed first. So notice our state step has the significance level, alpha equals 0.05, and also defines our hypotheses and our parameter of interest. In the plan step, we need our inference method and to check conditions. So if conditions are met, we will use a one-sample z-test for proportion. So the random condition. If the null hypothesis is true, then the row dismissed first each day is randomly chosen. For independent, if the null hypothesis is true, the row chosen each day has no effect on the other days. Finally, the normal condition. If the null hypothesis is true, we expect 10 times for row B to be chosen first and 30 times for row B not to be chosen first. So since both of these are greater than 10, we can do normal calculations. Now we're ready to calculate our test statistic. Since half of the 40 days row B was dismissed first, our sample proportion is 0.5. We're going to subtract 0.25, the null proportion, and divide by the standard error. A good trick on the calculator is press alpha and y equals. This allows you to input fractions. So our test statistic is approximately 3.651. Let's figure out what that means. On the calculator, if you press the stat button and then go over to test, choose one prop z test. Now on one prop z test, we can say our claimed proportion was 0.25, our null proportion, and we had 20 times where row B was dismissed first out of a total of 40 trials. And our alternative hypothesis is we suspect that the true proportion is actually greater than 0.25. So we'll select that last option. If we click draw, we can see what that test statistic represents. It's drawing the normal curve, and it's put the test statistic there, as well as shaded a very tiny proportion on the right-hand side. It says our p-value is approximately 0 0.0001. It's in scientific notation. So that means if the true proportion of times row B is chosen first is 0.25, the probability we'd observe a sample this extreme is very, very small. Press stat again and go over to test. Choose one prop Z test again, but this time, we're going to calculate instead of draw. Now, here's our test statistic, about 3.65, and here's our p-value with more digits. So we can see it's a very small number. So let's write down that p-value. Now we're ready to conclude. With a p-value of about 0 0.00013, which is less than alpha equals 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There's sufficient evidence to support the claim the teacher is favoring row B. So we concluded the teacher is favoring row B. If the teacher is actually dismissing the rows randomly, then we made a type 1 error by falsely accusing the teacher. However, the probability of row B being dismissed first at least 20 out of the last 40 days is only about 0 .00013, our p-value. So it seems unlikely we made an error. But with an alpha of 0 0.05, we were willing to accept less extreme evidence than this. So in general, the probability of this procedure making a type 1 error and us falsely accusing the teacher is 5%, our alpha value. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.